and welcome to today's Hidden Histories video. Today's video is all about the Oakview Cotton Gin House. The Cotton Gin House was built in 1900 by Job Wyatt and this building allowed the farm to gin its own cotton. Ginning is the process of separating seeds from the cotton lint. And although from the outside this building just kind of looks like a barn, and we no longer have any of the original ginning equipment that was used inside the building. You can tell a lot about what this building was used for by going inside and just looking up. As we head up, you'll notice that we're walking to the second floor of the cotton gin house. And as soon as you get up to the second floor, you'll notice that there's a large hole cut out in the floor. That's because the machines called cotton gins were located on the second floor. Powered by gasoline engines, they ran day and night during the harvest season. The gin cotton with no seeds would then be tossed down through this hole onto the first floor and pressed into bales. The cotton would be packed into 500 to 700 pound bales and loaded onto the wagons to be taken out to the market or the railroad for sale. During this time, Joe Wyatt continued to own and operate his seed store that was located in downtown Raleigh. And as an accomplished businessman, he also ran Oakview like a business. So he hired a farm manager who oversaw and managed the system of farm laborers and tenant farmers who worked on the farm. And having their own cotton gin on the farm accomplished two things. First, it meant that they could gin their own cotton. They didn't have to pay an outside gin to do it. So they could do all of the work from their cotton crop in-house. And secondly, we know from Wyatt & Sons Seed Company catalogs at the time, they actually sold the seeds that came from that ginned cotton. So they sold the cotton seeds in their store downtown, and they also sold them through their mail order catalog. So they actually used Oakview as a test site um, for developing their seeds and then selling them through their seed company. This record book was donated to us by the family of James A. Jones, who was the Oakview farm manager from 1920 to 1940. As you can see here, Jones used this record book to keep track of the work and compensation of farm laborers and tenant farmers working on the farm. And it might not seem like anything too special, but primary sources like this record book are important historical documents that give us a glimpse into the daily life and work of people like the Fairbows and the Robertsons. They are both families who worked as tenant farmers at Oakview for many years, and although there used to be several tenant houses on the property that laborers like the Fairbows and Robertsons lived in, those were all torn down in the 1980s, so we don't have those at our farm anymore to talk about. So records like this book give us an insight into the important daily lives and work of the tenant farmers and farm laborers. So this gives us an idea of how essential and important these tenant farmers and laborers were to Oakview and its history. Another really interesting part of this building that I wanna point out are these black markings that we see all over the walls. So these markings, some of them are drawings, some of them are initials that correspond to names, and some of them are numbers that correspond to weight or payment. And that's because all of these markings are left over from the days when this was a community cooperative cotton gin. What that meant is that farmers from surrounding farms in the area, if they didn't own their own cotton gin, they would bring their cotton here to be ginned in exchange for either payment or perhaps they would also work in the gin to pay off that payment as well. So these markings that we have on the walls are left over from the days of that functioning community cooperative cotton gin that existed during the Wyatt era. I hope you enjoyed following along with today's video. The Cotton Gin House gives us really great examples of all the different ways that we learn about history. Sometimes we learn about history and the past lives of others from really big buildings. Um, sometimes we learn about history through primary source historical documents like the record book. And sometimes we even learn about history from historic graffiti. So thanks so much for following along and I hope you have a great day.